The fight against ISIS in Iraq was a years-long, brutal campaign. Now the toll taken by its most important battle is coming into detailed and horrific relief. Hari Srinivasan has that from New York. The battle for Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, began in October of last year. This past July, the militants were finally routed, but at a devastating cost. Great swaths of the city lay in ruins, and thousands died, civilians, soldiers, and ISIS fighters. At that time, special correspondent Marsha Biggs was there for us, witnessing the grim search for the dead. Here's a short excerpt of a report she filed. This is what so-called liberated Mosul looks and sounds like. In a small pocket of the old city, the war against ISIS seemingly ongoing. Wow. And this is the old city from ground level, a scene of utter devastation. Entire neighborhoods flattened by coalition airstrikes, leaving the few survivors to search for the remains of their loved ones. Bashar and Ali's families were together in this house hit by an airstrike 28 days ago. Ali names the dead one by one. My mother, three brothers, three sisters, my father, two sisters-in-law, two nieces. And you're the only one left from your family? Yes. What are you going to do now? What can I do? I just want to take the bodies out and bury them. That grim task of counting and burying the dead is now several months old. And the numbers of civilian dead is shocking. A new report from the Associated Press puts that toll right now between 9 and 11,000 killed in Mosul. The AP says roughly one-third were killed by the U.S.-led coalition or Iraqi forces. That's much higher than the coalition's official figure of 326 civilian deaths. For more on the AP's report, I'm joined now by one of its authors, Susanna George. Thanks for being with us. First, let's start with that number. How do we get such a big discrepancy? How did you go about counting it? We spoke to half a dozen morgue and Ministry of Health officials in Mosul. Uh, we cross-referenced a number of different databases that were kept by independent organizations and non-governmental organizations, the United Nations, Amnesty International. And we pulled all these different lists together that we were able to get, lists of names of the dead or death tolls from, from the morgue. Some were handwritten on pieces of paper. And we cross-referenced them and were able to come up with that range from 9 to 11,000 civilians killed during the battle to retake Mosul. That's from October of 2016 until July of 2017 when the city was declared liberated. So when these people at the morgue write down uh, a, a, the name of a dead body, what do they say is the cause of death? And how do we figure out whether they were killed by ISIS or whether they were killed by airstrikes? Well, that's something that we had to rely on the morgue officials' knowledge of the cause of death for the civilians who, the bodies that they brought into their office. They have a small office in eastern Mosul where they work out of. And they said that they, they made a judgment call for cause of death as the bodies came in. And the ones that they logged as killed by uh, artillery or airstrikes, they were able to determine that by talking to family members who brought the dead um, into their office and also by examining the body. Many of the bodies, they said, as the battle moved towards western Mosul, the vast majority of the bodies that they were receiving at that time, they described as the cause of death as simply that they were crushed from either an airstrike, artillery, or from an IS uh, car bomb or explosives caused the building to collapse on top of the civilians. Give us some context of what was happening in March in that last surge. Was there an opportunity for coalition forces to recognize that there were going to be an increased number of civilian casualties? Well, what we saw there at the end of February and early March was something that we had seen happen a few other times in the Mosul operation. It was as Iraqi forces were looking to speed up the progress on the ground to retake the city, there was a spike in civilian casualties. And most people know about it because of the March 17 uh, coalition airstrike that resulted in more than 100 civilians dead. That's according to a Pentagon investigation into the incident. And when the reports of that incident 
began to surface in late March, the entire Mosul operation was put on hold for a few weeks. And coalition officials told us at that time that, and a, a diplomat who was present during those meetings told us at that time that they were, were looking to completely change the way that they were fighting the battle because the cost on civilian lives was too great. However, when we spoke to Iraqi officers on the ground who were actually leading the fight, they told us that they did not receive any lasting change in guidelines of how to call in airstrikes or how to carry out the fight on the ground from their perspective. You know, a few months ago, we saw in Marsha's story people going out and burying the dead. And in your story, you actually you show individuals that are going back and exhuming the bodies of their loved ones. What are they doing? Describe that. That was a, those were heart-wrenching scenes that we saw at the graveyards that are scattered around western Mosul. Families had to exhume the bodies of their loved ones in order to get a Ministry of Health death certificate. That's a piece of paper that would entitle them to benefits from the state if their loved one was a member of the police or of the Iraqi security forces. And the families who we spoke to in those graveyards said it was like reliving the tragedy of losing that loved one all over again, having to pull their body up from under the ground and having a, a Ministry of Health official or a morgue official examine it to, um, to corroborate uh, what they believe was the cause of death for their loved one. Well, one of the things that you point out in your reporting is that this is not anywhere close to a comprehensive number, that there are still mass graves where people haven't been identified, not to mention entire cities like Raqqa where it could be worse. That there's thousands of people who are believed to be in these mass graves that are dotted around Mosul, the largest of which is just south of Mosul's western half, Khasfa. And it also, this, the, our toll also doesn't include the people who died who were not from Mosul. IS, as the caliphate, the physical caliphate collapsed, IS herded thousands of civilians with them into Mosul from neighboring provinces. If there was a civilian who was from a neighboring province, not from Nineveh province, which is where Mosul is located, their death wouldn't have been recorded in the morgue and Ministry of Health documents that we examined as part of this investigation. So this is very much a minimum. Um, that range of nine to 11,000 is, we believe, a minimum. There's still hundreds of people who are still believed to be buried under the mm. rubble of the old city that uh, endured some of the greatest destruction in the fight to retake the city. All right, Susanna George of the Associated Press, thanks so much. Thank you.